I watched a really interesting documentary the other day called Free Speech Apocalypse. It's about an American evangelical pastor who was doing a presentation at a university uh, in a lecture theater about the sinfulness of homosexuality. <laughs> so you can imagine what this went down, you know, it went down like a like a lead balloon, <laughs> um, given especially the uh, the preponderance of LGBTQ positive, far left leaning attitudes of the current university population. So it interested me to see uh, how this would all play out, and uh, what was particularly interesting during the watching of the documentary is that I found myself really rooting for the pastor, despite the fact that I'm ideologically opposed to his position. I'm not a Christian. I don't believe the Bible is the word of God. I don't believe homosexuality is a sin, right? But I'm also not left-leaning. I'm kind of conservative-leaning, and I'm certainly not far left-leaning. Uh, and I find it very concerning kind of antics that the far left get up to. So let's talk a little bit about what was in this documentary. So the pastor just basically started talking uh, in a fairly polite way, explaining his reliance on the Bible, explaining what the Bible says and why he, why he takes this position. Uh, there was nothing threatening about it. Uh, there was nothing rude about it. Uh, he was simply attempting to convince his audience with logical argumentation as he saw it, right? So there were people standing up, shouting their heads off. At one point there was a whole row standing up, chanting. I think the chant was something like, We support free speech, not hate speech. We support free speech, not hate speech. Uh, and all I could think was, yeah, right hate speech. Is that really what he's doing? He's presenting an argument, but it's an argument that personally offends you. So you get to characterize it as hate speech, and you can use that characterization to deny him his free speech. Yeah? So, yeah, I noticed that. Hate speech is a word that is thrown around far too liberally, I think. So they basically didn't want him to speak. They wanted to shut him up. At many times through the meeting, people would stand up and walk out. Uh, usually there was some applause when that happened. There was one particular guy at the very back that I remember. He kept shouting out very rudely and interrupting the pastor when he was in full flow. And the guards who were standing nearby, one of them put a hand on the guy and the guy goes, don't you touch me, get your hands off me. But they were determined, because he was a nuisance, they were determined that, look, you gotta leave. So they, as gently as they could, pushed him out of the lecture theater. And it was gentle. But as he was going out, he was shouting, they're assaulting the queer! They're assaulting the queer! So there you're seeing the, the victimhood mentality that people on the far left seem to revel in, right? Um, at one point there was a woman who shouted out, again it was in the middle of the thing, it was quite rude, she shouted out, I hope my daughter is gay! And all I could think was, that's so irrational. It's such an irrational thing to say. Um, and I'll explain why I think that, because I realize that might get a few eyebrows raised, okay? Um, and people applauded her for that. But here's the thing, I got nothing against gay people in the moral sense, right? But I do recognize that homosexuality is reproductively maladaptive, right? That's what an evolutionary biologist would say. It's reproductively maladaptive. 
Two men having sex can't produce a baby. Two women having sex can't produce a baby, right? So that woman was essentially standing up and shouting, I hope my daughter is reproductively maladaptive. Don't get offended. It's just a fact of nature that sex produces babies and if you're homosexual, you can't have sex to produce babies, right? So, uh, anyway. After, I would guess, 15, 20 minutes, a lot of them had got it out of the system. Many people had left. The audience pretty much settled down to listen to the pastor, which is how things should have went from the get-go. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> there was one line he came out with that I thought was great. Uh, see the way I'm kind of taking his side here? Um, we'll, we'll get to that, right? He, uh, someone was again just shouting something abusive at him, I don't know, calling him a homophobe or something or other. Uh, and uh, he, he just looked at the person at the back of the hall and he goes, Yes, this isn't the first time I've experienced the tolerance buzzsaw. <laughs> I thought that was such a great expression. The tolerance buzzsaw. Yeah, because being on the left is all about being tolerant, isn't it? Yeah. Not really. There's a, there's a fundamental hypocrisy going on here. And that really is why I, I was rooting for the, the pastor. He was the one who was showing all the courage because he had an angry mob in front of him. And even though I don't take his position on things uh, at all, um, you got to respect that kind of courage to stand alone against an angry mob and not to lose your cool, not to run away and cry. Um, but you see, it's very easy to be on the other side, to be on this popularity side, to embrace this left-leaning agenda, this LGBTQ thing, uh, and to stand with all your friends and shout abuse at the one lone wolf <laughs> who's essentially uh, your enemy. You've declared him to be your enemy. And you can tell by the expression on some of their faces that they're loving it. They're loving the conflict. They're loving the victimhood even. Yeah? No. That's essentially all I want to say about the documentary, right? I was disgusted with the behavior of the far left, understandably. And uh, same kind of thing, I guess, happened to Cassie J when she made the documentary The Red Pill. And she, uh, it was against feminists, you know? But here's, here's what I want to describe as an alternative to all that behavior, right? Uh, the very next day, I was talking to a colleague in real life, and I brought up the fact that I had watched this documentary. Uh, this guy is a Christian, uh, evangelical type Christian, Protestant, uh, Bible believing, traditional in his views, so I knew what his view on homosexuality was. Uh, so I was talking to him about, uh, about the whole thing, and we got into a discussion on homosexuality, and... Uh, even though he knows that I'm anti-Christian, uh, we were able to have a completely productive discussion, right? Now, I know he believes that, the, that, that homosexuality is a sin against God, right? Now, I could have said to him, you're a homophobe. And that would have been pretty much the end of any productivity in that conversation whatsoever. Right? But I didn't say that. I didn't even want to say that because I know that's not even true. Right? What I said was, look, I understand the position you're arguing from. Your premise is that the Bible is the Word of God. Therefore, you're operating from that premise, listening to what the Bible says and agreeing with what the Bible says. And in Romans 1, it's very explicit that homosexuality is a sin against God. Right? So, I totally understand where he's coming from. He's just being consistent 
within the constraints of the premise that he has accepted, right? So he was he was comfortable enough with me to talk about the fact that this weekend coming he was going to be involved in a youth group activity where homosexuality was actually the topic under discussion and he showed me the five questions that he was planning to raise at that talk and he got my take on those questions and uh, he asked me uh, did I think that homosexual, homosexual, homosexuals were born that way and I said yes but he suggested there's no evidence for that I was able to point out the fact that uh, you can see, you know, there are adolescent people that you run into and something about their whole personality makes you think he's gay. And then later in a few years time when that person's grown up and they, they hit your radar again and you find out that they've come out of the closet and they are gay and you think, yep, I always suspected that. So. That shows you that being gay is more than just a sexual activity, more than just a choice that you make. It's something that is ingrained in the personality from quite a young age. Um, but the real, you know, the real good that came out of that conversation was the fact that, you know, at the tail end, as the conversation was coming to a close, I got to say to him, look, if your premise is wrong, you know, about the Bible, and if I'm right, then it really is an, an innate thing that you don't choose, think of the suffering that the, biblic, the biblical position causes to children who hit adolescence and then realize that they have these gay feelings that they didn't pick, they don't know where they came from, they're just there and they never made a choice about it consciously and they are told in no uncertain terms by their religion that they are sinning against God by even just feeling the way they feel without any choice in the matter. Uh, so my parting thought was for him to consider that suffering, consider the impact that it has on people if he's actually taken the wrong position, you know? So I got to achieve something there. I mean, it may have achieved nothing ultimately, but at least I may have made him think. So you see the difference between the approach I took from the approach that this disgusting, angry mob took to this pastor who just had something to say why did they feel it was such a threat to them? In part, I'm sure it's immaturity, but it's also a mob mentality. Uh, so this is why I, I find it very hard to respect people who are on the left of the political spectrum. And I don't respect the far right either, but this whole left-leaning thing seems to be particularly pernicious and particularly dangerous. Uh, so this video is really just to show you, uh, you know, there's a different way. There's a different way to go about it.